How does someone actually die from pancreatic cancer? In this video, I'm going to be talking about how pancreatic cancer progresses, what actually causes death, and how can you help as a caregiver? This information will vary from person to person. What I'm talking about in this video is me speaking generally about pancreatic cancer and what I usually see as a hospice professional and as an ICU nurse. Before hospice, the person with pancreatic cancer will have many different options, many different roads. Some people with pancreatic cancer will be able to have a type of surgery called the Whipple procedure, which can extend life. Some will not be able to have that procedure. It just depends on a bunch of different things. Some people will have chemo, radiation. It just depends. There's a bunch of roads that you are going to have as someone with pancreatic cancer before you come onto hospice. There are so many roads with pancreatic cancer because it just depends on where yours is located, what part of the pancreas, has it metastasized to other parts of the body, how advanced is it? So there are many different avenues you can take depending on those factors. Unfortunately, at the end of the day with pancreatic cancer, it usually is a terminal cancer. I know that might sound harsh and be hard to hear, but I do think it's so important that people know that because the more they know, the better they can choose which path they want and how they want to live out the rest of their life. The common symptoms we see from pancreatic cancer are usually shortness of breath, pain, confusion, and agitation. Now that's a lot, but let me explain each one and why. Usually, even before someone comes on hospice, they usually will have metastatic cancer, which means move to the liver. When something moves to the liver, the liver starts being damaged and doesn't function as well. And depending on how damaged the liver is, will tell you how aggressive these symptoms will be. So you usually will start getting ascites and I will show a picture of what ascites looks like. So with ascites, you get that fluid in the abdomen, which can cause someone to look pregnant. Basically it can be as big as someone like eight months pregnant. And that fluid will have to be drained because it does cause pain and it does cause shortness of breath. So even before hospice, sometimes patients will be getting that ascites drained in the hospital periodically just for comfort reasons. Now, once on hospice, if they have a drain placed, which I always recommend to have a drain placed before coming onto hospice, we can drain that ascites in the home. And I will always, always, always recommend that for all of my hospice patients coming on for pancreatic cancer, metastatic to the liver, which is usual. It's very, very common. Because pancreatic cancer metastasized usually, this is why it's usually so deadly, it can metastasize to, like I said, the liver, the peritoneum, which is basically anywhere in the abdomen, the lungs, and the brain. I usually only see pancreatic cancer to the liver, but every once in a while it can metastasize, like I said, to other places. It just depends. That is why there's so many symptoms. Usually like the more body parts that are affected, the more symptoms you will have. And unfortunately with the pancreas and the liver and anything in the abdomen, that can cause some pain. Hence why I said a lot of times people with pancreatic cancer have pain. The other symptoms, confusion and agitation come along usually again, because the liver is affected. If you guys haven't noticed when the liver is affected, you can have a lot of symptoms. So why does that happen? That happens because ammonia levels start building up on the blood system. And when that happens, it causes you to get confused. And then because of confusion, you can be agitated. There is a medication we can give people called lactulose. Lactulose binds to that ammonia. And then lactulose is also a laxative. So it helps you poop it out. So it binds to the ammonia and you poop it out and can kind of clear your confusion. It eventually will stop working, but it does work a lot and is very helpful um, while someone is on hospice. So what are people actually dying from pancreatic cancer? It's a complicated, answer, but generally speaking, they are likely dying because of the general dying process that's happening because so many organs are affected. Your pancreas isn't working that great. Then it metastasized to the liver. The liver isn't working that great. And when you start having organ failure, this starts telling the body we're shutting down. We're not working as we should. So it starts affecting the whole body because our whole body is connected. So then the body starts going into the dying process that it naturally knows how to do. 
So it makes you stop eating, stop drinking, start sleeping. Then that process takes over and then slowly but surely your body is slowly shutting down, which causes you to die. And just as an FYI, this is a very simplified explanation. I'm purposely doing that just so we can simply see why the body is shutting down, how someone eventually dies from pancreatic cancer. So simply speaking, that is how. So now that we know all of this, what can you do as the caregiver? First and foremost, the thing I say over and over and over again is let your loved one's body, the person who's dying, let their body be the guide. And you ask yourself, are they clean? Are they safe? And are they comfortable? So if they're clean and they're safe and they're comfortable, there is nothing you need to do. You allow the body to be the guide. You can always offer food, always offer water, always offer, do you wanna get up and out of bed and go do something? But if they don't, and they are clean and safe and comfortable, you can let them be. Now, if they are not clean and safe and comfortable, that's when you have to intervene because of course you can't allow someone to lay in bed with uh, that's wet or soiled. You have to make sure they're clean and safe. And then if they're not comfortable, you can always talk to the hospice team about, listen, my loved one is not comfortable. They're having pain. They're having extra shortness of breath. What can we do with this? So you as the caregiver can manage the physical things at home, right? Like, are they in a safe bed? Are they in a clean bed? bed? Are their clothes clean? Are they sleeping okay? Do they feel okay? And then our hospice team, the hospice team can help with the symptoms. So they may be having a lot of symptoms. Like I said, the shortness of breath, pain, confusion. That's where the hospice company comes in to help educate you about the medications that you have in the home to help with those symptoms. And again, if you've done all of the things and used all the medications that you already know how to use and they're still uncomfortable, you want to call the hospice team to think of another plan to get extra help. So how will hospice manage these symptoms? For the shortness of breath, which is usually from the ascites, that big abdomen, the number one thing that will help that is having a drain placed. I always would say prior to hospice, if I see a hospice patient come to my admission who has a large belly because of ascites and no drain, I will tell them to not come on hospice yet and go get a drain placed if they can. So uh, just to be clear, not everyone can have a drain placed. There, there are some medical issues that may cause you not to be able to have a drain placed, but if you can do that because then we can drain that at home. So that's the first thing for ascites. The second thing that will help the most with the CITES would be morphine because the morphine is going to relax their central nervous system, relax their diaphragm, which is getting pushed up because that ascites and make them feel more relaxed and not have so much air hunger. And then the last thing that I think is used a lot, but not might not necessarily be needed is oxygen. Oxygen can make them feel a little better. I'm not sure if it's totally needed, but again, like comfort's the utmost importance. So if they think it makes them feel comfortable, go for it. And if it helps, definitely use it. The pain. Pain is different for everybody with pancreatic cancer because sometimes depending on where it's located, sometimes people have no pain with pancreatic cancer and sometimes people have a lot of pain. Again, it just depends on where it's located. A lot of times with metastatic cancer to the liver, they can have pain from that. And then it, of course, just depending on where tumors are located and if there are tumors and the size, things like that can cause more or less pain. And again, hospice are expert at pain management. So we will use all different types of medication to help with pain, usually starting at the lowest, you know, Norco or morphine. And if that's effective, we'll stay there. And if not, we'll always increase. Some people need long acting medication, which means something they take continuously, like twice a day, no matter what, that slowly releases into their blood system, some kind of long acting medicine, along with short acting medicine, meaning something that releases immediately into the bloodstream. It just depends, but again, work with your hospice company and they are usually experts at pain management. With confusion and agitation, many things we can do with that. First line of defense, like I said, is the lactulose that binds to ammonia levels, which helps you eventually clear it out through your waist, and then that can clear you up. You may have agitation for other reasons besides high ammonia levels, and we have medication for that as well. But it can be difficult, so you may want to, the hospice company may need to try a few different things to help manage that. This disease can be devastating, but I truly believe that the more you know about it, the more you understand, the better you can help your loved one, the better your loved one can live better and die better. Mm -hmm.